about the reunion in 2000. There was a Watchtower reunion show here in Austin, attended by the late great Chuck Schuldner of death and Control Denied fame shortly before his unfortunate death. How will you always remember Chuck? Uh, he was obviously a huge fan of you guys to travel all the way from Florida for the gig. Did you guys correspond at all? Um, yeah, death would come through and I'd go to the shows. And uh, we were, once again, uh, more telephone friends than we were pen pals. But uh, he was always such a big fan and uh, loved my vocals and loved, loved, loved Watchtower on the reissue of uh, the, the vinyl and the CD, I believe, of Spiritual Healing. If you, it's a gatefold, and you open up this gatefold, and Chuck Schuldiner is going like this, and he's wearing a Watchtower shirt. It's the coolest thing. It's like, that's the coolest thing I could ever think of. Um, you know, how many, how many bands can say that? You know, that, the, that a, a, a death metal god is wearing, you know, your band shirt on a on the on the reissue of one of his famous releases, you know. Um, yeah, Chuck was an awesome guy, and uh, forever in in my heart. He, uh, you know, those were the last two shows that he came. He came to the San Antonio show, and the Austin show. Uh, someone who was instrumental in helping him get down there. He had some of his Control Denied guys with him. Uh, but there was a girl from Boston, Natalie Vlahovic, I think as I'm saying her name correctly. She deserves credit in talking Chuck into, hey man, you guys need to come down here. You know, I'll help you however I can. I know you're not feeling well, yada, yada, yada. Uh, I think that she really was instrumental in, in getting Chuck and, you know, some, some of his guys to come down to Texas and hang out. And that was just a great time because it was a reunion. I mean, I hadn't worked with Watchtower in 13 years, and everyone was really excited about it. And uh, we had gotten booked. The reason for those reunion shows locally here were warm. They were warm-up dates for the Bang Your Head uh, festival that we were that we were booked for in uh, 2000 in Ballingen, Germany. And uh, yeah, that was an incredible moment. But, uh, but yeah, just, just, just see, you know, uh, funny thing is, is, uh, Chuck was a big Dangerous Toys fan as well. Loved the, the first record and, and when the toys would go through Florida, he was always at the shows and, uh, very responsive and just very, very nice. And, uh, he's definitely missed, but probably the biggest Watchtower fan we ever knew. Well, I mean, I, I didn't really get to know him as well as I would have liked, you know. I mean, I met him, I met him the first time I ever met him. Uh, Jeff played a show at Godfrey's Ballroom in Baltimore, Maryland, where I'm from. And, uh, you know, he was one of the, they played a, this really long set. It was just around the time Leprosy was about to come out or had, had come out yet. It, it was going to be out. Um, and I remember I got this death sticker. I don't know where it's at, but I know I have it in the house. He signed it with the old logo, you know, with the with the with the sky and everything, and just with the, all the crazy stuff around him. And, um, I remember just he signed it. Just I met him then. I was I don't even think, geez, I don't even know if we'd even started the band Corpse Grinder yet. It might not even been happening yet. You know, when when I saw them. So that's technically, you know, that's you meet him, but it's you know. But when I first met him, like when I was in Monstrosity, I met him because we played in. Uh, we played in um, Milwaukee and with uh, Monstrosity played with Death and uh, Pestilence and Jason Goble knew, you know, Chuck from the De from the human recording sessions and all that, you know. So he introduced me to him and I was just like, oh shit, you know what I mean? It was a big deal. And, and then uh, uh, we played some shows, uh, played a show in, in, in South America with, with Death and Incantation. And Richard Christie was drumming for the, with them uh, at the time and he's like, hey man, you know, let's go, let's hang out after the show. In my in my room, you know, we'd get some beers and fucking party. All right, cool. I didn't know he was sharing a room with Chuck. So when Chuck was, I was like, dude, I, I don't want to be here and be in the way. And was, now Chuck was like, no, dude, hang out, man, fucking, you know. So you know, I was getting drunk. And I just was like, look, man, I I just gotta tell you right now, you're the reason I'm doing death metal vocals. I mean, you're the reason I'm I'm 
You know, you, you, I mean, I'm here because I love Black Sabbath and Ozzy and, and Theo Black Sabbath and all that, you know what I mean? And, and, and Iron Maiden and all that stuff. That's why I got, you know, that's obviously the beginning for me, but the reason I'm singing death metal, the reason I'm in Cannibal Corpse, the reason I ever did Monstrosity and Corpse Grinder, obviously Corpse Grinder because it's a death song, is because of you, because, you know, I just, you know, I just, I just, you know, fanboyed him, you know, but he was totally cool, you know, and so we hung out that night and everything was great, and then uh, I think he was doing a Control Denied, and there was a show at the Brass Mug, it's this, this uh, bar, it's the greatest bar in the world, it's in Tampa, Florida, and, um, you know, I was hanging out there, and, and he came up and tapped me on the shoulder, you know. And I was with, I was hanging out. I was like, do you know who that was? And, you know, yeah, it was Chuck. And I was like, oh, shit. Because he's like, hey, George, how you doing, you know? Which I just figured he don't, you know, he don't remember. You know, I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, I didn't even know he came into the place, you know. I know that they were recording. I think Control and I was recording. So, yeah, that's the only few times I ever got to meet him. You know, I didn't get to know him that well, you know. But for what he did for me, obviously, all the high stuff that you hear I'm doing, all the long streams devoured by vermin, you know, all the pounding the dust up, and the, all that. It's almost 100% inspired by Chuck Shoulder. I mean, I'd, be, I'd be doing a disservice to Robert Bernani if I did not mention Sacrifice as well, but Chuck Shoulder was one of the big things to me, you know what I mean? It was, I remember talking to Richard Christie about it, you know what I mean, when he you know, passed away and whatnot, man. It sucks because you just think, you know, I mean, he might not have still been doing death metal at this point. He might have been sticking with control denied or whatever, but at least that would, possibility would always be there, you know, that you can see them play again. It's unfortunate, you know, we lost a lot of people, you know, recently, you know, Dio and whatnot, you know, and, and uh, um, um, Guar, you know, guitar player from Guard's passed away, so it really sucks, man, you know, you, you don't think about it, you know, I mean, it's easy to sit and think that, you know, uh, you're gonna live forever when you're in a band, you know. But. And KK left Priest. Yeah, man, you know. Yeah, and Jeff Hanneman's arms fucked up, you know. It's like, damn, man. Somebody's have to get us. That's, this is true. It's not going more. Don't come after me because I'm gonna fuck you up. So, big whoever it is. say about Chuck you know I mean it kind of pisses me off a little bit that you know other people other metal icons that have died in other more severe ways kind of overshadowed Chuck you know you don't really hear a lot of people talking about Chuck I mean granted VTech and Dimebag were, were horrible horrible losses but and and, and you know I've met VTech a million times VTech was a very very good friend I'm not trying to speak ill to that at all but VTech didn't give to the world of metal like Chuck did. You know, Chuck's influence is felt across every fucking genre in this business. Power metal, black metal, death metal, everybody can say that they were influenced by death at some point or another. And just to see kids nowadays that don't even know who he is, is fucking sad, man. It really is fucking sad. The guy gave his life to this genre. He did everything for his fans. He used to call his. He used to tell his mom that his fans were like her extended family, and they are in every way, shape, and form. And that man is probably one of the only metal musicians I've ever seen that would constantly redefine himself from album to album to album. And as soon as you thought you knew everything you knew about death, something else would come. He'd put out the next album and be like, "What the fuck did this come from?" You know, holy shit, this is just fucking amazing. And that was symbolic. And then, you know, Sound of Perseverance comes out and again, just completely changed the rules of the game. Just, just everything that was said that it couldn't be done, he did. And what happens right after that? He puts out Control Denied and again, just redefines fucking everything all over. And from what I'm hearing, there's actually a second Control Denied getting ready to come out and I'm like a fucking kid that just found his daddy's gun and got the trigger lock off and about ready to shoot my friend after school. Like, I'm that excited to hear it.